I've been making Portal 2 workshop maps for nearly five years. Some people love my stuff, some people have bad taste. And in this video series, I'm going to be showcasing the development of my latest map series, which I'll be calling Frostbite, which is actually a name that's available in the workshop. I checked it a few months ago. I mean, I haven't checked it in a while. I should probably check it again, but what are the odds that it's been taken? No, doesn't count. Wait, what? One month ago, are you kidding me? I will let you know now that this series is going to spoil the story, the visuals, and the gameplay of the map series. So if you want to experience it blind, I would recommend watching this series after the maps have already came out. But if you're fine with being spoiled, we can begin. Back in February, I wanted to see if I could make a mod really quickly. I've seen how quickly I made some chapter. I ended up realising, wait no, I should focus on chapter 5 and it got left alone for ages, but here's what I got up to. I decided that it would be mainly in a snowy aesthetic, just like seasonal science, as I feel that's a very underused aesthetic. In fact, whilst I'm sure it exists somewhere, I've never actually seen someone do a snowy map comparable to seasonal science. So I thought it'd be a nice spin to keep these maps original. I also wanted to focus on vacuum based puzzles, as I feel they allow for many clever unseen techniques which I could expect with. Also, the community love them, so it will help with marketing. So what's the story? I already have all the parts all planned out in my head, but I won't reveal them until I'm doing the respective map. This is because this is all subject to change and I might decide to cut an idea later on, but I might still like that idea and want to use it somewhere else. But if I've already given it away here, then it won't be as effective. But essentially, sometime between Portal 1 and 2, you're woken up in a long-term relaxation ball. A voice on the intercom is telling you that he's a scientist who worked for Aperture but got trapped during the collapse of the facility. He explains that it's taken him a very, very long time to remotely access the personality you're in from where he is. Now the actual dialogue won't be that vague, but there will still be a feeling that he's not telling you everything. But once he trusts you some more, then he'll start giving away a few more details. But I'll explain it all myself sometime in the future once I'm doing a more story-focused episode. He promises you that if you help him out, he can get you out of Aperture. So after wandering through some partially collapsed corridors, you enter a vac tube and he redirects you to a testing track, as according to him, it's the best possible route to him due to the collapse of the facility. Anyway, the testing begins and that's as far as I'll go for now. Hey, what are you saying? You need dialogue? Yes! On a workshop map? Yes! I'm not going to be doing a one hour mod. <coughs> Whilst it's in development, I'll probably just be using my own voice, but later on I'll probably end up switching to someone else as one, I suck at voice acting, and two, I'm an 18 year old with a British accent. Now, the scientist could be British, that's fine, that could work, but the scientist is supposed to be around his 30s or 40s, I know I have a deep voice, but I don't sound 40. And just in case you didn't hear it, yes, he is an aperture scientist. Characters just as standard cause is a bit overused, so instead I want to explore how well a human focused story can work in a portal setting. Keep in mind, everything you see is subject to change, but here's a tour of what I've made. This is the relaxation role. It's alright, I like the shape, seems like a lot of wasted space though, I feel like Aperture would want to cram some more people in here, but this is what it is right now. Not too sure about the sequence of this panel being removed. I know I want something fancy for the chamber opening, but I'm not sure that's it. The reason it's a grate and not glass is because any use of glass in this situation causes visual glitches. I love Sauce. So much. But moving on, we progress through these corridors, which I actually briefly showed off in the mod I didn't make. Then I do the cliche of a protagonist crawls through debris, and said debris shakes while scrolling through. Now it's okay to use that here, because that's a cliche for films, not Portal 2 workshop maps. Portal 2 players are going to see this and think, Wow, such originality! My god, how does he do it? Anyway, passing that and through a door, you find another one of those subject storage halls you were in. However, this one is collapsed and flooded. Crossing the bridge, you end up by an elevator room. Now, I already have a new plan for this sequence. I'm going to heavily rework all of this, but for now, arms pop out the floor and this door drops down, and this wall opens up. The scientist dumps some exposition, then you proceed into a vac tube. You're given this brief glimpse at this large, dark, flooded cavern in Aperture, and then you end up in the first chamber, which I was happy with until playtesters took 10 years to solve this puzzle. Wait. What? When did that happen? Most of them didn't even notice that the portal gun they were given was for both portals and not just one, so this chamber has to be reworked at some point. Bruh. But once you beat it, you once again step into a vacuum and you're transported to the next chamber. I was thinking, how can I make my elevators unique so that you can instantly recognise a map as being part of the series? And I just came up with the idea to have the player being in a vacuum at the start and end of each map. And when they enter a chamber, a wall just opens up and the player is launched inside. Brilliant. Way faster than making a custom elevator, plus it's unique. Ish. I mean, it's probably been done before, but it's not common. Actually, co-op starts the player in a vacuum all the time, doesn't it? 
Oh, for f My next chamber actually has snow this time. The idea was the other chamber was too deep to see the sky, but not this one. And it's fairly detailed, not quite done though. I want to rework the above ceiling area, tweak the fog and the lighting, but most of it is actually done. Also, this chamber actually involves vac tubes. And I'm a pretty big fan of the puzzle. It took ages to come up with, but here are the moves involving the vac tube. First you have to use it to drag the cube towards this grate, then you'll be pulling the cube over here towards you by placing portals on the wall, then you send a different cube back by doing the same thing in reverse. And at the end, you have to respawn the cube by sucking it up while standing here. So lots of use out of the tube, plus I don't think I've seen moving a cube on and off a button like that with a tube before. So you're basically all caught up. Now this isn't quite the style of videos that I'm going to be normally making for this series, as this was a recap of stuff that I did a while ago and not me actually doing anything. Next time, to make things more interesting, rather than finishing off a map I've already got, I'm going to make it a new map. So we're done. Now I don't want to put this at the start of the video, as that's scary new viewers, so instead I'm addressing it now. Hi. Hello. First video with my face. But it's not a face reveal, my face has been public for ages, it's shockingly easy to find. Why am I doing a video with my face? Well, I'd say I'd rather be a person and not a brand, so it, that's all just works better. And also because I think it's just more engaging if it's an actual face. So I should probably get the first one out of the way while I only have 700 subscribers. But anyway, see ya.